Airplane, hilarious spoof movie which of course takes place on an airplane. Released in 1980, it follows the character Ted Stryker, played by Robert Hayes, a traumatized war veteran turned taxi driver who boards a flight from LA to Chicago in order to win back the love of his stewardess girlfriend, Elaine Dickinson, played by Julie Haggerty, whom has broken up with him. However, during the flight, many of the passengers and crew become ill from airplane food poisoning, where all manner of hilarious chaos ensues on this manic flight of absurdity. It's up to Stryker to put aside his fears of the war and take to the controls of an air vehicle once again and land the plane in this classic movie that is a prime example of a spoof movie done right, with many memorable performances, including Lloyd Bridges as the control tower supervisor, Robert Stack as Captain Rex Kramer, and Leslie Nelson as Dr. Rumack. So get out your dancing shoes and get ready to mock Saturday Night Fever as we look into 10 things that you didn't know about Airplane. fly this plane and land it? Surely you can't be serious. I am serious. And don't call me Shirley. Number 10. Inspired by a serious movie. <laughs> Airplane was the brainchild of comedy trio Jerry and David Zucker and Jim Abrahams, whom also gave us the Naked Gun series. The creation of Airplane goes back to 1971, when the three young funny men created a comedy theatre group called Kentucky Fried Theatre, where they would perform for an audience. In order to get material, the trio of funny guys would record late night TV and the next day review the tapes in order to get inspiration for funny gags. One night they accidentally taped an old 1957 movie called Zero Hour, which is basically the exact same plot as Airplane, even down to the fish food poisoning, only the movie is played out entirely serious. Upon watching it, the two Zuckers and Abrahams knew that they were onto something with Zero Hour, and that there could be great comedy potential, so they got down to writing a remake, be that a spoof remake. In fact, Airplane's co-director, Jim Abrahams, describes Zero Hour as being the serious version of Airplane. Number 9. Original Title David and Jerry Zucker and Jim Abrahams wrote the original script for Airplane in 1975, and the movie's original title was The Late Show, which is a curious name as The Late Show doesn't exactly suggest that this is a movie about an airplane. However, before The Late Show, or as it would become, Airplane could go forward, it was felt that the rights to Zero Hour would have to be obtained, as the Airplane script was seen as being too similar to Zero Hour. So there was a fear of copyright infringement, so the trio of young writers managed to buy the rights to Zero Hour for $2,500 in order to avoid any legal issues. The writers also took inspiration from the Airport film series, which were a series of airplane disaster movies which came out during the 70s. Once again, these films were played seriously. The original script also featured parodies of commercials that were on TV at the time, but it was advised by people who read the script to not include the commercial gags, so they were eventually removed. I'm kind of glad because they may not have made sense for future viewings. Although the advert parodies may have worked in the late 70s, 20 to 30 years later, new viewers probably wouldn't get the jokes. Number 8. No one wanted the script, so they made another movie. Airplane was the first script that Abrahams and the Suckers had worked on, and by the mid to late 70s the script was complete. However, there was just one problem. No one was interested in the script at that time. The three writers were friends with director John Landis, and he encouraged them to write a script based on their Kentucky Fried Theatre act, so they abandoned Airplane and instead got to work on Kentucky Fried Movie, which the Zuckers and Abrahams had written with Landis directing. Abrahams and the Zuckers learnt a lot about the filmmaking process while making Kentucky Fried Movie, as well as being their first time on a movie set. 
and they learned while making Kentucky Fried Movie that if Airplane was to be made into a movie, in order for it to be the movie they wanted, then they themselves would have to direct it, with all three of the young performers eventually becoming the directors of Airplane. Number 7. The movie was intended to be shot in black and white. The Airplane script was making its way around movie studios, with word of mouth getting around about how funny it actually was. Production company Embassy Pictures were interested in the script, and were in talks with the Zuckers and Abrahams for them to make Airplane. However, the Airplane script found its way to future Disney CEO Michael Eisner, who at the time worked for Paramount Pictures. Eisner set up a meeting with Abrahams and the Zuckers, and said that Paramount Pictures could distribute the movie on one condition. It be filmed in colour. You see, originally it was intended for Aeroplane to be a black and white movie, as a homage to the movie it was spoofing, Zero Hour. A similar thing happened a few years earlier with Mel Brooks' Young Frankenstein, which was also filmed in black and white to comedic effect. But yeah, just imagine if Airplane was in black and white. I can actually see that working, to be honest. And of course, the Zuckers and Abrahams went with Paramount Pictures over Embassy Pictures, as Embassy Pictures were more of an independent movie company, whereas Paramount was more mainstream. And thus, Airplane was filmed in glorious colour. Number 6. Non-Comedy Casting When it came to casting Airplane, the Zuckers and Abrahams wanted to cast actors who hadn't done comedy before, or at least weren't known for comedy. David Letterman auditioned for the main role of Ted Stryker, but didn't get the part. The part went to Robert Hayes, as Abrahams and the Zuckers liked his performance in the movie Angie. As for the role of Elaine, Sigourney Weaver actually auditioned for the part, but she didn't get it and the role went to Julie Haggerty. Christopher Lee and Don DeLuise were approached for the part of Dr. Rumack, but both actors turned the part down. So, Leslie Nielsen took on the role, and totally steals the show thanks to his deadpan delivery of dialogue, which contrasts with the absurdity of the script. Excuse me, sir. I'm sorry I have to wake you. You a doctor? That's right. During filming, Nielsen would often pull pranks on his co-stars with whoopee cushions, and was generally considered lots of fun to work with. Aeroplane was the start of Nielsen's career as a leading comedy actor, and after Aeroplane, he would go on to star in more comical roles in movies like The Naked Gun and Dracula Dead and Loving It. Number 5. Robert Stack Impersonating Himself Modern audiences may recognise actor Robert Stack more for being the host of the mystery TV show Unsolved Mysteries where he no doubt contributed to many children's nightmares in the 80s and 90s, thanks to the chilling way he presented the show. However, long before that, he played Captain Rex Kramer in Airplane, where he delivered an unforgettable performance. However, originally while filming, the Zuckers and Abrahams felt that he wasn't playing the part the way that they had in mind. So in order to get the performance they wanted, they took interesting measures as they showed Stack a tape of an impressionist called John Briner, who was impersonating Stack, and told him that's the kind of performance they want. So Stack had to study the impressionist impersonating himself in order to get the performance right. So, just to recap, Robert Stack's performance in Airplane is based on an impersonation of Robert Stack. So, he's basically impersonating himself, and yep, I've just gone cross-eyed. Number 4. Music of Airplane Airplane was scored by movie scoring legend Elmer Bernstein, who at the time was most well known for creating powerful epic scores for movies like The Ten Commandments and The Magnificent Seven. He had previously dabbled in comedy two years earlier, where he scored the John Landis movie Animal House. Bernstein saw an early cut of Airplane and found it to be a really funny movie, and he was told to write a score that's corny and over the top, and not to make it sound epic, but more like a score for a cheap B-movie. And just with Animal House, it totally works, as the music in Airplane takes itself so seriously and can be so overdramatic, which is a great contrast to the absurdity and comical mania of what's on screen. His score definitely completes the movie. And like Leslie Nielsen, Bernstein would go on to continue to branch out in comedy more, going on to score movies like The Blues Brothers, Trading Places, and Ghostbusters. Number 3. The Sequel there was indeed a sequel to Airplane, which came out in 1982, called Airplane 2, the sequel. Now let's just say that the two Airplane movies are like twins, 
Well, the first airplane movie is the sibling that everyone loves and looks up to, whereas the second is the black sheep in the family that no one likes. So how did Airplane 2 go so wrong? Well, for a start, Jerry and David Zucker and Jim Abrahams, who were the driving force behind the first movie, didn't return for the sequel. That and the sequel interestingly takes a more science fiction approach, where this time it revolves around a spacecraft and a colony on the moon. Airplane 2 had a promising start in the box office when it first came out, but its numbers had drastically dropped in its second week, with the movie only going on to make $27 million at the box office. The critics weren't kind to this movie either. At the time, Airplane 2, the sequel, often got lumbered with Grease 2, in that they were both sequels to popular movies that Paramount Pictures had released in 1982 that were ultimately flops. Well, at least that year they had much better luck with Star Trek 2. Wow, all these number twos coming out in the same year. But to be fair, Airplane 2 does still have its fan base, and some claim that had the first Airplane movie not come out and Airplane 2 been its own thing, then it may have been just as popular and successful as Airplane. Number 2. Name Change Yeah, believe it or not, but here in Australia and New Zealand, Airplane had its title changed to Flying High. In fact, all my life I've known Airplane as Flying High. There have been many times when I've been talking to people outside Australia about comedies, and I bring this movie up and the response I always get is, what is Flying High? In fact, even while making this episode, I keep instinctively wanting to call Airplane Flying High. So why the name change? Well, because of the movie The Concorde Airport 79, which was part of the Disaster Airport film series as previously mentioned, a series that Airplane even took inspiration from. The Concorde Airport 79 was released in 1979 in the States. However, its release was delayed in Australia and New Zealand, with it being released here in 1980, round about the same time that Airplane was to be released. And whoever was in charge of Airplane's release in this part of the world thought that the two movies' titles sounded too similar, and may cause confusion on the account that they would both be released at the same time. So Airplane became flying high. However, even now, 40 years after its release, it's still known as Flying High, and at this stage, it probably will be forevermore. What a pisser. Now, often when I talk about movies that have alternative titles in other parts of the world, some people tend to say, well, that's not true. What proof do you have? I've been to said country, and it didn't have an alternative title when I was there. Blah, 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 blah. Well... Here is my DVD of Airplane, where you can clearly see it's called Flying High. So yep, yeah, this is my actual physical evidence that the movie is called that here. Flying High. Number 1. Legacy There was a bit of apprehension over the release of Airplane as supposedly the film fared poorly in its test screenings, and Abrahams and the Zuckers were worried that they had a flop on their hands. Airplane was released worldwide in July 1980, and was very successful, bringing in $158 million on a mere $3.5 million budget, making it a huge money maker for Paramount Pictures. Airplane would go on to be nominated for a Golden Globe for Best Motion Picture Comedy, as well as a BAFTA, and the Zuckers and Abrahams would win a Writers Guild of America Award for the script that they had created for Airplane. So their initial worries over the movie's release was proven wrong. Airplane was praised by critics who thought the movie was silly and juvenile, but it was silly and juvenile done right, making it a genuinely funny movie. Not only does Airplane often make it to funniest movies of all time lists, but also the list of greatest movies of all time in general. In a poll done by UK Channel 4, it scored as the second best comedy movie of all time after Monty Python's Life of Brian. It was also ranked at number 6 on Bravo's list of 100 funniest movies. It also made it to Empire's list of 500 greatest movies of all time, and the New York Times 1000 greatest movies of all time as well. It also came in fourth in the Writers Guild of America's 101 funniest screenplays. So Airplane was big business for what was otherwise a silly film, and it has gone on to have a lasting impression where even now it's still admired and celebrated. Heck, even a bald guy from Australia is making a YouTube video about it. It's definitely a small movie that went a long way, and is still going strong with its popularity increasing in time. 
It's a movie that shows us that in our gloomy world, laughter is important, and sometimes we need to see silly things and to have a good laugh. This film is a must for all movie fans. Seriously, Airplane is a benchmark in the history of comedy and cinema, and it's one that guarantees a good laugh from those who watch it. Even though nowadays the spoof genre isn't really a thing thanks to a decline in the recent quality of spoof comedies, Airplane shows us that there is merit in the genre if done right, with good humour and passion. Anyway, I'm Minty, and don't call me Shirley. See ya!